Okay, welcome to PS6 review. We're reviewing for the test, so make sure you're following along. You're trying these problems on your own first before you watch the video, but the video can help you do any of the questions you don't know how to and help you just prepare for the test. I'm sorry for the rumbling in the background. There's construction going on as usual. So our objective today is I can review for the um, unit six test. So we're gonna start on our paper. First question, it says Diego has a skateboard, scooter, and a bike. He wants to know which vehicle is fastest. A friend records how far Diego travels on each vehicle in five seconds. Okay, so anytime it says one thing equals another thing, that is the ratio we're gonna use to help us get to our answer. So if it says a skateboard is 1,080 inches, we know to get from inches to centimeters, we multiply one times 2.54 to get to centimeters. So if we have the inches, we're gonna multiply by 2.54. So each of these, we're gonna multiply by 2.54 for the inches, multiply by 2.54. Okay, and this is gonna give us our distance in centimeters so we can know which one is the fastest. Um, the bike is already measured in centimeters, so it says 4,800 centimeters. We already know how many centimeters that is. We don't need to convert. So let's get some math on. So for the skateboard, um, I'll just do it over here. So it says 1,080 times 2.54. Okay, I'm multiplying. I know there are one, two numbers after the decimal point. So I'm gonna make a note of two and then I can erase. Okay, start here. Four times zero. Four times eight is 32. Four times zero is zero, plus three is three. Four times one is four. Okay, next um, place value is five. So I'm gonna add a zero. Five times zero is zero. Five times eight is 40. Five times zero is zero, plus four is four. Five times one is five. Okay, now I'm gonna add two zeros for multiplying by the 200 place value. Um, Two times zero is zero. Two times eight is 16. Two times zero is zero plus one is one. Two times one is two. So I'm gonna add them up. Zeros, twos, threes, 14. One plus five plus one is seven. And then I have a two, okay? And I know there are two numbers after my decimal point. So I'm gonna move it one, two times and place it. So um, 1,080 times 2.54 is 2,743.20. So I'm gonna write that over here. Two thousand. I'll write it so I don't forget. 2,743.20 or just point two. Okay. Okay, moving to the scooter. We're trying to multiply 1,020 times 2.54. So for the scooter, I'm gonna go over here. 1,020 times 2.54. Again, there's two numbers after the decimal point, so I'm gonna make a note of it and then erase the decimal and then multiply. Um, <clears throat> four times zero is zero, four times two is eight, Four times zero is zero. Four times one is one. Okay, next place value. Oh, I really should have done more space, but that's okay. I'll add a zero. Five times zero is zero. Five times two is 10. Five times zero is zero plus one is one. Five times one. Okay, last one. Um, <clears throat> multiplying by the two, so I'm adding two zeros. Two times zero. Two times two is four. Two times zero is zero. Two times one is two. And then I add them up. <laughs> and I did not plan this out very well, but that's okay. Four plus one plus four is nine, five, two. So when I write my final answer here, I would say two, five, nine, zero, eight, zero. I know there's two numbers after the decimal, so I move it one, two times. Place it. So it's 2,590.8. Okay, so now that I have some answers, I can see which one is going the fastest. Okay, 
So, the fastest one will be the one that traveled the most in five seconds. So, um, so this one's 2,743, this one's 2,590. So it looks like the bike for sure traveled the farthest, because it's 4,080. So I'm gonna say the bike would be first. Second would be the skateboard. Because it traveled the second fast or farthest, and then the scooter would be last. Which makes sense. But we gotta do the math to show the work. Okay. Number two, complete each statement. 20% of 60 is, so to find 10% of 60, I divide by 10. 60 divided by 10 equals six. So 20% of 60 would be twice as much. So I'm gonna times it by two. So it's gonna be 12. You could do a table to solve these or you can just kind of think of strategies. Um, next, 25% of some number is 6. So I'm going to use a table for this one because it's a little tricky. So I have a number and I have a percent. And I know the number 6 says 25% of some number is, so when we see is, 25% is 6. So I'm going to put 25% here. And I'm trying to figure out what the number is. I'm going to try to figure out what goes here. The number would be all of the number, right? So 100%. There's always going to be one of them is going to be 100%. So I know 25 times 4 um, times 4 is 100. So I'm going to do 6 times 4. And 6 times 4 is 24. So my answer is 24. So 25% of 24 is 6. Okay. We got a war zone out there, if you can hear that. Um, moving on, blank percent of 100 is 14. So this one's a little easier than you think. Any percent of 100 would be like 1% of 100 is 1. 2% of 100 is 2. 3% of 100 is 3. So blank percent of 100 is 4. Oh, I know that easy. 14% of 100 is 14, okay? Because percent is a number compared to 100, so that one makes it nice and easy. Okay, next one. 50% of 90 is. 50% of any number we divide by 2. So I'm going to just say 90 divided by 2. And I know 90 divided by 2, you might need to do some math, but 90 divided by 2 is 45. If you need to do 90 divided by 2 to figure that out, go for it. Next one. 10% of some number is 7. So I'm going to go back to my table again, so because these ones maybe are more confusing. So I have a number and I have a percent. So it's saying 10%, so 10% is seven, okay? And I'm trying to find out what the whole number is. What is 100% of the number? So I know 10 times 10 is 100. So I'm gonna multiply seven times 10. And seven times 10 is 70, yay. So I'm gonna say 10% of 70 is seven. Okay, last one on this, question two. 30% of 70 is, okay. So one way I like to do it is start by finding what is 10%. So 10% would be 70 divided by 10. 70 divided by 10 is seven. So seven is 10%. 30% is gonna be three times as much because 10% times three is 30. So I'm gonna multiply seven times three to get 30% and that would be 21. So 30% of 70 is 21. Again, you could do a table to help you find this one, but you can find out what 10% is by dividing by 10. And to find out what 30% is, we multiply that by three. Okay, question three. Question three, a car has 15 gallons of gas in its tank. The car travels five miles per gallon of gas. So per gallon, remember per means one. Um, how far can the car travel with 15 gallons? Show your reasoning. So I'm going to set up a table. I have gallons, gallons of gas, and I'm gonna say um, miles, so how much it travels. So this one says five miles per gallon. So I know it travels five miles for one gallon of gas. 
and it says, how far can the car travel with 15 gallons, not miles, 15 gallons. So I'm gonna put this under 15, um, under gallons, I mean. So one times 15 is 15. So I'm gonna multiply five times 15. And let's do it. Five times 15, five times five is 25. Five times one is five plus two is seven. So it can travel 75 miles if it has 15 pounds. That is my answer for that question. Okay, the second part of question three says, how much gas does the car use to go 100 miles? So I'm gonna continue the same table. So how much gas does it need to go 100 miles? So I'm gonna put 100 here. Maybe I'll keep this 100. Okay, I know five times 20 is 100 because five times two is 10. So five times 20 is 100. So I'm gonna multiply one times, one times 20 and one times 20 is 20. So 20 gallons to go 100 miles. So that's gonna be my final final answer. I'm gonna say 20 gallons to be able to travel a trip that long. Okay, so make sure you understand and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, question four. <clears throat> a pink paint mixture uses 56 cups of white paint for every seven cups of red paint. So seven goes with the red, and 56 goes with the white. How many cups of white paint per cup of red paint? So tables are our friends. We have um, red and we have white paint, and these are gonna be cups. So our ratio is seven red to um, 56 white. And it says per cup, remember per means one. So per cup of red paint under red, I'm gonna put one. 7 divided by 7 is 1, so I'm going to divide 56 by 7, and 56 divided by 7 is a good old 8. So I would need 8 cups of white. Make sure you get practicing labeling your answers because on the test you need to make sure you label your answers. Okay, number 4. If there are 9 cups of red paint, how many cups of white paint are there? So if there are nine cups of red paint, so I'm gonna just continue this table up here for this next question, how about? So if there are nine cups of red paint, nine under the red, how much, how much white paint? Since I already find my unit rate, this is gonna be nice and easy. So I'm gonna do one times nine gives me nine. So I'm gonna multiply eight times nine to get how much um, white paint. Eight times nine, if you need to use your finger trick, is 72. So 72 cups of white paint. 72 cups white paint. And that's my final answer. Here's my work to show it. Um, okay, moving on to question five. Ooh, I love the relief from the construction, yay. Question five, Noah and Andre are 15 miles apart on a bike path when they start biking toward each other. Noah rides at a constant speed of four miles per hour, and Andre rides at a constant speed of two miles per hour. How long does it take until Noah and Andre meet? So we want to see how long does it take until they meet, meaning until they are zero miles apart. So let's think about this. I'm going to set up a table to kind of figure this out. So I'm going to think of it this way. There's a lot of dis different ways you can do it, but I'm just gonna see, do it this way. So I have um, Noah and I have Andre, and I'm gonna say um, miles apart. Miles apart, and then over here, actually, I'm gonna say hour, uh, hours, yeah. Okay, so for example, when they've traveled, when it's been zero amount of time, they've traveled zero miles, both of them, and they are 15 miles apart. So they start being 15 miles apart. So we need to work towards each other. We want to see how long it takes to go towards each other. So first I'm going to start by just seeing how long does it, how 
much closer are they when it's one hour? Um, so if Noah rides four miles per hour, so I'm gonna put one by the four, and Andre rides two miles per hour, we know in one hour they've traveled four plus two, so four plus two equals six miles traveled. So I'm gonna subtract, they started 15 miles apart, then they traveled six, um, six. so I'm gonna subtract 15 minus six, and I know they are only nine miles apart at that point. Okay, now I'm going to um, just go up by another one. So I'm gonna say two hours. So two hours, Noah would have traveled four times two is eight, two times two is four. So combined, they traveled eight plus four, eight plus four equals 12. So if they started with 15 miles apart and then they've traveled 12 miles closer, now they are only three miles apart from each other. So I know it's gonna take more than two hours. Now I know, I notice that it's changing by six miles every time, because it subtracts six and then subtract six more would give me three. So if I subtract six more, I would be in the negatives. So I'm gonna go in a half an hour range and see what that would look like. So I'm gonna go for 2.5 hours and see what that looks like. So if he travels four, Noah travels four uh, miles in an hour, in a half of an hour, that would be half as much. So half of that would be two. So I'm gonna, instead of going up by four this time, I'm just gonna go up by two for a half. So I'm gonna go up by two, eight plus two is 10, okay? If Andre goes two miles in an hour, in a half of an hour, he's gonna go half as much, so one. So here it's two miles is four, four, so I'm gonna go up one instead of two this time to get to five miles for the half. Now I can add these up. I know 10 plus five is 15 miles. So if they travel 15 miles and we are 15 miles apart, subtract 15, they are now zero miles apart. So it took them 2.5 hours, 2.5 hours. Okay, so that's gonna be more like a level four type question. Instead, on the test, it won't be they'll, they're moving towards each other, they're moving apart. So the distance will get um, bigger. So it'll be a little bit easier than this one, I think. But 2.5 hours. Okay, question six. It takes 10 pounds of potatoes to make 15 pounds of mashed potatoes. Yum, yum, yum. At this rate, how many pounds of mashed potatoes can they make with 15 pounds of potatoes? Okay, perfect table problem. We've got potatoes, and this, well, I'll spell it out, potatoes, and then we got mashed. I'll just write mashed for mashed potatoes, okay? We know our ratio is 10 pounds of potatoes for 15 mashed potatoes, and we're trying to see how much um, pounds of potatoes, so we don't know how much pounds of potatoes, when there is um, 15 pounds of potatoes. Oh, sorry, how much mashed potatoes are there when there's 15 pounds of potatoes? So before I can get to 15, an easier way will first be to get to five potatoes. Because I know 10 divided by two is five. And then, so, um, sure, we'll just do it this way. And then 15 divided by two would give me 7.5. Because I know half of um, 14 is seven, and half of eight is, or half of 18, or half of 16 is eight, so between seven and eight is 7.5, or seven and a half, okay. So next one, five times three gives me thir or 15, so I'm gonna multiply 7.5 times three, and that's gonna give me my final answer. So let's do it, 7.5 times three. So make a note, there is one number after the decimal point, so I'm gonna erase. Three times five is 15, three times seven is 21, plus one is 22. And then I place my decimal back. There's one number after the decimal. So for 15 pounds of potatoes, there's 22.5 mashed potatoes. So I write my final answer, 22.5 um, pounds mashed potatoes. Yay, so 22.5. Lots of mashed potatoes for Thanksgiving or something. B, how many pounds of potatoes are needed to make 45 pounds of mashed potatoes? So now I'm gonna extend my table and I wanna find out 
um, to make 45 pounds of mashed potatoes. I put 45 under the mashed. How much potatoes? This one's easier because we have a um, 15 right here, and I know 15 times 3 is 45 because 15, 30, 45. So that means I'm going to multiply the other part of this ratio by 3 as well. So 10 times 3, which is 30. So 30 pounds of potatoes. 30 pounds of potatoes. <laughs> you get the point. Okay, just remember, tables are our friends. They always, always work on these problems. Um, next one. So a shopper needs 24 sandwich rolls. The store sells identical rolls in two different, differently sized packages. They sell a six pack. So we have a six pack, pack for $5.28 and a four pack, so this is a different one, a four pack for $3.40. Should the shopper buy four six packs or six four packs? So we're trying to see which one is the better deal. Which one is the better deal um, to get 24, because they need 24 sandwich rolls. So which one is the better deal? So let's start with the six pack. So the six pack, um, we have, let's see, rolls, and we have money. So the six pack means six rolls for $5.28. And we want to see how much does it cost to get a 24 pack, so 24 rolls. So six times um, four would be 24. So we're going to multiply 528 by four, and that's going to give me my answer. So 528 times four. One, two numbers after the decimal. Four times eight is 32. Four times two is eight, plus three is 11. Four times five is 20, plus one is 21. And I'm gonna place my decimal, 21, 12. So it's gonna cost $21.12 if I get a six, six packs, four six packs to get to 24 rolls. Now I'm gonna look at the four pack. I'll just put it in a different number, or <laughs> number, I mean color. So, we have rolls and we've got money. So we know we can get four rolls for $3.40. And we're trying to see what the cost is for um, 24 rolls. Okay, so four times six would give me 24. So I'm gonna multiply 340 by six. Okay, so 340 times six. There are one, two numbers after the decimal point. Now I erase. Six times zero is zero. Six times four is 24. Six times three is 18, plus two is 20. And I place my decimal back, one, two. So for 24 rolls, it would be $20.40. So which one is the better deal? One that costs $21.12 or $20.40? $20.40 is the better deal. Yay. Yay. Um, so I'm gonna say, since that was the four pack deal, I'm gonna say the four pack. And I circle my answer and you can like point to your work to show. You can also write out this one's cheaper for 24 rolls or something like that. But make sure you show how much cheaper rather than just saying, I guess this one. Okay, I need to see your work in your table. Okay, question eight, Ocho. There are 16 red Skittles in a bag of 64 total Skittles. How fun. What percentage of the Skittles are red? Okay, tables are our friends. We've got Skittles. And we've got percent. Anytime it says what percent, percent is going to be one of the ones on our table, one of the columns. So we know there's 64 total Skittles, so that is all of the Skittles in the bag. And we're trying to see how many are, um, what percent are red. Okay. So you can think about this. I know 16 times two, <coughs> sorry, 16 times two is 32. So, um, the thir 64 is twice as much. So I know 16 times four is 64 and that could take you a little bit longer and that's okay. So 64, I know it's getting smaller, so I'm dividing by four to get to 16. So I'm gonna divide 100 by four, and 100 divided by four is 25. Okay, do not forget 100 divided by four. That's very important for you to know. 
Um, so 25% of the Skittles are red. So you can say 25% are red guys. Okay, next question. There are 48 total Skittles in a bag and 75% of them are yellow. How many Skittles in the bag are yellow? So this is a new table because it's a new percentage. And we've got Skittles and we've got percent. So we know 48 Skittles um, is all of the Skittles, so 100% of the Skittles. And we're trying to get to 75%. So we're getting to 75%. The reason I'm putting this here is because I know I need to get an easier number here before I can get to 75, because I don't know what I divide 100 by to get to 75. That's a little tricky. So first I'm going to find out what is 25%. Because I know 100 divided by 4 is 25. So 100 divided by 4 is 25. So I can divide 48 by 4. 48 divided by 4, if you use your multiplication chart or if you do some longer division, 48 divided by 4 is 12. Okay? So now that I know what 25% is, I can get to 75% quicker. So 25, I know times 3 is 75. So I'm going to multiply 12 by 3. 12 times 3, 12, 24, 36 is 36 Skittles. So how many are yellow? 36 um, Skittles are yellow. So a big percentage of them are yellow, weirdly. Okay, moving on to number nine. Which weighs more? So which one's heavier? Which one weighs more? A pumpkin that weighs 3.2 kilograms or a cat that weighs nine pounds? Okay, explain your reasoning. Note, always pay attention to this. Note, pay attention. This means this is important. One pound is about 0 0.45 kilograms. So if it gives us something like that, that is our ratio we are going to put on our table. So we know the ratio is 1 to 0 0.45. So that's nice for us because now we can just do a table with pounds and kilograms. And there's a couple ways how we could do this, but I'm just going to put the ratio first. So one pound is 0 0.45 kilograms. And again, it tells us that. That's how I know what that ratio is. And I can either convert the pumpkin's weight to pounds, or I can convert the cat's weight to, um, to kilograms, okay? So I'm gonna convert the cat's weight just because I know if I put nine pounds here, and this is the cat, okay? I know one times nine is nine, so I know it's just I'm multiplying by nine, and that makes it kind of easy. So 0 0.45 times nine will give me the number of kilograms of the cat, and then I can compare. So 0 0.45 times nine, there are one, two numbers after the decimal point. So I'm gonna erase the decimal now, and multiply. Nine times five is 45. Nine times four is 36, plus four is 40. And I'm gonna place my decimal, one, two places. So 4.05, so the cat, so the cat weighs, um, cat's weight, <laughs> the cat's weight is 4.05 kilograms, and the pumpkin's weight is 3.2 kilograms. So 3.2 or 4.05, looks like 4.05 wins. So I'm going to say cat's weight is um, bigger than the pumpkin. So the cat is the winner, cat. It's heavier and you have to show your work. So you can't just pick one and just say, I think or whatever. I need to have you convert the pounds to kilograms and then you can compare the both of them as kilograms and then that explains your work and you will have to do that on your test. Okay, um, but it won't be the same objects. Ray, right, last one, how exciting, yay. Okay, Andre types 208 words in four minutes. Noah types 342 words in six minutes. Who types faster? So let's start with Andre. I'm gonna pick red for Andre because I'm on red. Andre, um, we have words and we have minutes. 
Okay, he types 208 words in four minutes. Okay, and then we're gonna have Noah. I'm gonna put Noah in blue. Noah, um, he types words in minutes. 342 in six minutes. So we can um, multiply them to get the same number of minutes, or we can find out their words per minute. So whatever you want to do. I'm going to just say their words per minute, and per minute is one. So we just have to have the minutes be the same, and then we can compare the number of words. So whichever way you want to do that. I'm going to start by just doing, okay, 4 divided by 4 is 1. So I'm going to divide 208 by 4. So I'm going to do some long division. 4 goes into 2 zero times. 4 goes into 20 five times. 5 times 4 is 20. Bring down my 8. 4 goes into 8 two times. Ooh, nice and easy. 2 times 4 is 8. So, um, Andre's speed is 52 words per minute. Now let's look at Noah's speed. So let's see Noah's words per minute. Per minute is 1 minute. So 6 divided by 6 is 1. So I'm going to divide 340 by 6. So I'm going to do some long division. Okay, so 6 doesn't go into 3, 6 does go into 34, we know 6 times 5 is 30, so 6 times 5 is 30, 30 minus 4, 34 minus 30 is 4, so I'm going to bring down the 2, I know 6 goes into 42 7 times, 7 times 6 is 42, and look how nice, 57 is our answer, so Noah goes 57 words per minute, Andre goes 52 words per minute types. So I'm going to say Noah is faster. Noah is five words per minute faster. Faster. Okay, good for Noah. Okay. So when you are done with this, you are turning it into the basket or putting it in your binder if you're not here at school. Um, and then you have some other work to do. So some of your work that you might need to do is you need to do the Jeopardy review slides. You can watch the video or um, check the answers as you go. You can do the Khan Academy practice test and these IXL skills. So do all the things possible for you to help you review for the test so you can get 100% or get a four or whatever. Um, thank you for watching the video.